Welcome, listeners. Glad you've joined me for a chat. Why not pour yourself something warm to drink? It is still cold in Michigan. It is that time of year when she starts to do her little dance and flirts with both winter and spring. Every day, each suitor pleads his case. This often brings us mere mortals to daydream of summertime and warmer weather of hanging out in the backyard, having barbecues, and maybe playing that throwing game that is a national sensation, Cornhole. Which brings us to our segment. Now, in other news. Did you know that there are high school cornhole teams? In fact, there is even now a national high school cornhole championship. Took place in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. The location of the competition was not very surprising, but the home of the winners might be. Take a guess. Come on. A group from Thunder Ridge High School in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Thanks to KMGH in Denver for this story, by the way. Not only is it not the first place you'd expect the champs to come from, but the odds were stacked against these boys. The team members had only been playing the game for about a year, while most of the other teams have been playing and developing their tossing skills for at least two. In fact, the team found out about the championship only one month prior. Not a lot of time to get ready. As they say, to the victor goes the spoils. With the win came a prize of over $8,000 that the school will be using to put into the Cornhole Club and grow the game. Congrats, gentlemen. Thanks for the entertaining tale. We all love a story of how hard work and dreaming big can pay off. Maybe you have a dream that you're struggling to make into a reality. If that dream is writing a book, then I hope I can help you with these tips I've discovered on my writing journey. If you have another dream, there are parts to these suggestions that you can extrapolate to fit your own goals. The advice I'm about to give is designed for someone who has an idea or inspiration of what they want to write. Maybe you've got it all planned out and just can't get started. Or you just have a starting point. Either is good. If you are not even at this point, I suggest you find yourself some writing prompts. The Google machine has a lot of them out there. And play with them until the muse strikes you with a big idea. Okay, so you have part of a story or the whole shebang. But you are staring at the blank white page and it's freaking you out and you can't get going. Or you start, write a little feel overwhelmed, and quit. My suggestions may or may not work for you. Everyone has to find their own motivation and path, but I've got plenty of tricks for you to try. Remember, the goal is to try. Just write. Write anything. Stop judging yourself. That is a motivation killer. The following strategy is one I gave to a friend recently to help her deal with a block. Think of your favorite scene in your story, the one it really calls out to you. You know, it plays over and over again in your head. It gives you a tingle down your spine. That one. Sit down and write it out. Who cares where it belongs in the story? You don't have to begin at the beginning. It doesn't matter. Bring that one scene to life. When you are writing, You should start to hear your characters in your head. Trust them. Start to ask questions about the scene and the characters. Flesh it out. What are they wearing? What is around them? How do they feel? What caused these events to happen? What are they going to do because of this? Next is the breadcrumbs. Whenever I wrote a scene out, 
I usually had ideas of what I wanted to happen next or maybe before. Or perhaps it was something a character should say. I would write notes in my Word document and highlight them in red, placing them where they should go in the order of events. Think more as before and after events in a timeline. I called them my breadcrumbs, like Hansel and Gretel. When I would sit back down later to write again, the first thing I would do is look at my breadcrumbs. Which ones were calling to me? Which ones wanted to be brought to life? Then I would write that scene out. I never wrote my book in order. I usually found I was writing three chapters at any given time. That was my norm. They were three in a row, mind you, but I would bounce back and forth in the story. Before I would close my Word document, I would add any necessary breadcrumbs that came into my mind for later. Now, sometimes a breadcrumb would never get used. That after I wrote it, by the time I got back to it, I had changed my mind, the story went in a different direction. That's fine, who cares? You know, they were a lifeline for me. They're there solely for my use. If they're not useful to me, get rid of them. There were times that those comments in red were not calling to me though. It, it happens. I then used a different strategy. I would go back to the beginning or wherever I had left off and edit my story. In 90% of the cases, this editing resulted in a burst of ideas, adding depth to the story or the characters. It was almost always a very satisfying day of writing. Now, there were a few occasions when nothing else came. However, this was never a waste because I at least got some editing done and that's always a good thing. Another tool I used was monitoring my progress. I kept a Word document in which when I was done writing for the day, I would record the day, the page number I was at, single spaced, and total word count plus how many words I had managed to write that day. So here's an example for you. May 21st, 2021, my page count was 26 and a half. My word total was 15,211, and I did 339 words that day. I didn't write again until May 26, 2021. At that point, the end of that day, I was at 28 and a half pages. My total word count was 16,366, and so I had written 1,155 words that day. My average output increased as I became a stronger writer. My best day was August 26, 2021. I wrote just under 5,000 words. Mornings were my favorite time to write. Not crack of dawn, but around 9 or 10 in the morning. My brain was awake and I had the whole day in front of me. That was when I would settle down into my library and start working. I had certain music I liked to listen to, though I might change it up when I was working on a particular scene. It was summertime when I was listening to a lot of Bing Crosby's Christmas music because I was working on a winter bit in my book. I also found supporters. I could not have done this without my read team. I had several critique readers, and they were reading as I was writing. Not everyone likes this system or supports doing this but it really helped me a lot. They were my cheerleaders. I owed them the next pages and so I had to work. I liked the accountability. They also pushed back on my writing. They asked questions or commented on things that didn't make sense or needed more information. I was able to make changes to my manuscript as I was going along based on their suggestions. Nikki, Kevin, Lou, seriously. This book never would have gotten done without you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Writers, I hope these pieces of advice can help you achieve your dream. Keep working at it. No shortcuts, I'm afraid. Just lots of hard work. Those of you who know writers, please be patient with them. Being a storyteller is challenging stuff, and we need your support. Speaking of books, before I go... I have another fun story for you. 
This comes from the Huffington Post. A book was lately returned to the public library in Boise, Idaho. The checkout date was November 8th, 1911. The title of the book is The New Chronicles of Rebecca by Kate Wiggins. Well, the book was new in 1907. I think Rebecca's chronicles are a little past their prime now. Printed on the checkout card is the return policy. Two cents for every day late. That will put a fine of over $800. Now, the library wouldn't have charged more than the price of the book. In fact, they have gotten even rid of that. It is one of the libraries that have done away with late fees and said you can't check out any new material until all your due items are back. I'm a big supporter of these no-fee systems. They are better at promoting reading. I have to wonder how many people are going to end up reading this book now that the stories come out. Is there going to be renewed interest in the new Chronicles of Rebecca? Well, if you go and read it, tell me all about it. Do you have any other tips or tricks to get yourself to do those things you want to do, but find it hard to actually get done? It doesn't have to just be writing. Most of us have some kind of struggle like this at some point in our lives. I would love to hear about you and how you cope with them. Share them on my Jackie Lynn's author Facebook page. The link is in the description. As always, dear listener, thank you for joining me. If you're enjoying the podcast, remember you can follow on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon Music. They come out every other Thursday. I would be delighted if you left a review.